This is the first serious production electric vehicle by Mazda, the Mazda MX-30. Here in Autogefühl we'll take you on a detailed tour, an exterior, interior and today also on an exclusive ride with the prototype. Everything you need to know about this new EV. Join us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Short preview because the EVs, they have instant torque and what about the acceleration here for the Master MX-30? Let's go! Plop, that's 90 kilometers an hour and I have to say it was also slightly uphill. So, what you've seen, for a 140 horsepower output vehicle that was already quite impressive and by the way the top speed oh big bird the top speed will also be 140 kilometers an hour so that's also quite easy to remember in the front we can see here the front grille is a little bit smaller than for example the CX-30 you know the ICE brother, the internal combustion engine brother, so they make it a little bit more likable. But then again, this three-dimensional design, or heading over to the headlamps, they come with LED as a standard. Of course, there are some resemblance, again, to the Master CX-30, also to the Master 3, but then again, a strong crossover look here already in the front. And talking about the name, Master MX-30, yeah, some might criticize because, yeah, the MX-5, that's, you know, the car where the MX letters belong to. Ford recently also did that with the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Yeah, you know, they want to give heritage to the vehicle and also some sportiness or something, you know, special to the car. You can understand this, yeah. I have to say, I'm also not a fan of that, you know, so using those, you know, existing names, maybe to think about another name, but I can understand where it's coming from. But what's your take on that? The length is 4 meters 39, 14 foot 4 or 173 inches. That is actually the very same length as the Mazda CX-30. They do not share exactly the same platform because this one here is indeed an own EV platform, but they have a lot of similar parts and also you know how they organize the structural rigidity. You know, there you do see some resemblance and again the same length and the very same wheelbase. So they could use some knowledge from the ICE car platform and then develop the EV platform on the base of that. Then you can see design-wise, very strong crossover look here again with the fenders, 18-inch wheels. In this case, there are uni-color um, forms available, so you have to, you know, the whole car in white or also other colors, but you can also get a contrasting roof, in this case, for example, in gray. Very interesting that here it's a little bit higher, but then you have a shoulder line that goes all over the vehicle and it's rather, you know, plain and simple from design because they wanted to take away, you know, some, you know, complexity from design. Then again, this rather, let's say, SUV coupe style falling roof line right here with the Mazda lettering and again, this contrast color plays in a no, no big effect right there. At the moment it's only EV, but it will also be offered with a range extender at the later stage. We'll soon talk more about that, you know, what they, what they plan right there. First of all, tell me what you think about the special design here as for the side profile. And of course we'll now move on over to the rear. Well now here at the rear, again, very three-dimensional tail lamps. This is very interesting. And you can see when you have the contrast roof, it really continues up to the rear. So this is a more daring design element. And again, very thick plastic cladding here in the lower area to stress this crossover look. And you know, it's something in between. It's not a really super high SUV, but it's also not a low compact hatch. And I think this is really appealing because this very segment here, like Compact crossovers, compact SUVs is actually the most surging segment overall on the worldwide car market. So it only makes sense to also pick an EV to introduce it here on this special form. And so far, there are not so many compact 
electric vehicles in the compact SUV form on the market, so this could actually be a sweet spot for them. Let's talk about the specs here with the cutaway model, always interesting to see. The electric motor will be mounted in the front, so the lower part of that, especially in the motor then, so just to the front wheel drive. 140 horsepower power output or 265 newton meters of torque. And what else we can see, right, this is by the way an AC synchronous motor, so not as efficient as the permanent magnet motors that Tesla has been introducing. Then the battery will be placed in the lower end here, this is, you know, the Below that it will be the battery module, so first of all to put it in a good sandwich concept and also to bring the center of gravity really low. And the size is 35.5 kilowatt hours, so that's not that big, that's promising a range of about 200 kilometers or 125 miles. And Master actually says that it would be right sizing as you would do with engines. So, and the reason for that is when you're building smaller batteries in the car, you keep the you know, resources and, and energy and so on for the production low. That makes sense in an environmental, environmental sense, definitely. And especially if you use this car you know, for primary city use. And then the range is also fine, it's enough. But when you think about longer trips, that can actually be a problem. Of course, they also thought about keeping the price low. German price supposed to be for this car, also with some equipment in it, about 34,000 euros. That's actually quite decent, and the reason for that is also that the battery is not that big. So if they would, let's say, have double the battery size, would be like more than 40, like 50,000 euros or dollars, and then it could be a problem to sell this car on the market. Yeah, so we have to see about that. Looking forward to the discussion with you in this field. By the way, here in the rear, we can see the AC converter. And why is it here in the rear? Because either the plugs will be plugged in right in the rear. We'd switch the sides for that. So here we are. So this will, will be a 6.6 .6 kilowatt AC charger next to a 50 kilowatt DC charger. And it depends on the region where you buy the car. Either it will be CCS, predominantly in Europe then, or Chedimo, for example, in Japan. So it depends on the market which DC charging standard you're getting. And some of you might have asked yourself, so why was the electric motor in the front that big? Well, this one here is already the cutaway model with the additional rotary engine as a range extender. We can see it right here on the right side. Why are they using the rotary engines? Or famous German word for that is Wankelmotor. <laughs> so the German lesson for today. So they're using it because you can build it in a very compact way, it's also lightweight, and it also gives you less vibrations for the car. Yeah, we know, for example, from uh, past Mazda rotary engines that they're actually really high in the fuel consumption if you use you know, all of the momentum and you know, all different RPM areas. So why would they do that as a range extender then for the EV? First of all, the reasons I just mentioned. And the thing is, this one will not directly power the wheels, it will actually generate power and in this case it will run at a you know, certain RPM level and then you can actually let, let it run in a more efficient way. So more efficient than it would vary in the RPM figures. three information in advance before we get to the interior actually. First of all, there will be a head-up display, so we can always see from the outside, but we won't be able to see it from the inside. Second, we are not allowed to go inside the car ourselves with our bodies, because it's a hand-built show car, but we will show you everything from the interior and explain everything to you. And the trunk is also sealed off because there's no you know, real built trunk yet. But 
There's a lot to discover, I can tell you. And now to the interior, which is probably even more interesting. Let's open the doors and I'll be very gentle because this one is a hand-built single car, so to say. So uh, there's nothing more about that yet. So just this piece here in this configuration. And we'll soon talk about the inside of the doors and so on. First of all, let me show you. Those are suicide doors, so they open in an opposite way. Master calls them freestyle doors because that sounds better than suicide doors, of course. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was you know named suicide doors um, originally because, yeah, when you open that door during driving, yeah, that's like suicide. You know, that's you know where the name is deriving from. But freestyle doors sounds, of course, cooler. So I just give you one free look here, right there. I mean, it looks cooler, of course, design-wise, and you have a free open space to the interior. Why are they doing that? Well, it's also a quote to the heritage of the company. For example, the RX-8 had suicide doors in 2003, and since you know they're also looking forward you now to the you know, feasting on 100 years of Mazda, they also want to give even more quotes, and we'll soon come to another element of that. So. Definitely cool design, but of course, if you think about when you drop the kids off to school, you have to get out first in the front, open the front door, and then open the rear door. Well, yeah, for small kids, it's okay because you should get out the car yourself anyway to protect them. But, you know, a little bit older kids or something, or of course, if you think beyond kids, it's more practical to have separate doors. So it was the same discussion with the BMW i3. So I think, yes, the normal door setup is more practical, this one looks a little bit cooler and, you know, they want to show this heritage, do something special. What do you think about it? Please put it in the comments. Now, inside of the doors here, this is already very special. You see the top part, the gray one, this is actually felt, but it's completely recycled, 100% recycled from PET, so from plastic bottles, so already more sustainable. And then the rest of the interior also Besides two exceptions, it's all animal free. So this one here is also animal free. This one here is, you know, rather hard pack, but again in the let's say leatherette style. Then here as well, rather, but this one will be softer touch than in the final model. And what's interesting here is already, and I also expect some leatherette for this part here, by the way, for the final model. Here, what you can see here on the back side, this is already cork. You know, the bright material and, you know, I also have it on my smartphone cover, for example. And why are they using this cork? And you can also see more of that in the middle console of the car, the lower middle console. They're using cork because Master, actually, what hardly anyone knows, they started as a cork company or cork production company 100 years ago. That's, again, you know, quotation of the past and also using, let's say, more fun, but also more sustainable materials because it's even, you know, waste cork they use for that. So more deals for that. Very interesting. So the steering wheel and on the shifting lever, those are the only two parts still from animal origin. They are working on a solution for that too, to make it completely animal free. Of course, the animal free interior parts are more sustainable, more animal friendly, also more human friendly because the animal leather production process is a really hazardous process. Then you can see those instruments here, digital instruments, um, especially with the you know, screen in the middle there. And um, you can also see how it's, you know, the difference when it's all dark and how it's lightened up. So, but the real screen then in the middle part. And then you have some analog elements on the outside parts each. Very interesting. On the steering wheel itself, it's pretty classic, as we know from Mazda. That's actually nothing new. And then, more to this middle console, you can see this is the it's a automatic shifting lever. Electric car, of course, always has an automatic. Therefore, you don't need like any special or longer shifting lever. Then you have um, the screen there in the lower part to control the climate unit. You will be able to touch the screen or here in the left side also to change the temperature. This is by touch. The top screen, 8.8 .8 inch, as we also know from their combustion engine cars, this one will be having Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, is not touch. You control that actually there from the lower console again with this driving knob. So they always, you know, check it, metal check a structure around it. You can go back, have a hotkey for the GPS and so on. This will control be all there because they say it's, you know, better for safety. And in the lower part of the middle console, you also again have a cork ground and there's also the part for the USB supplies and so on for all the connectors. And about the seat setup, there are actually two main themes they have there. This one here is called Modern Confidence with a bright fabric on the inside and bright leather red on the outside and there's a second seam available 
and it has a dark gray fabric on the inside and brown leatherette on the outside called industrial vintage. And the special thing about this here is that they also try to implement recycled materials as for that, that make it more sustainable in the whole production process. And if you look at the outs of the seats here, it feels very, very soft. So you're using a special technique to make it very soft and you don't feel any difference between the animal uh, skin leather and the leather red here. So more sustainable, it still feels very good. It's also very durable. And on the middle part and fabric to make it more, also more breathable, so it stays cooler in summer and also warmer in winter. And it's actually part of their whole philosophy. You can also see it on the rear seats. They use the very same materials because they say they want to make the whole car more sustainable, not from the drivetrain only. And that's the whole new thinking at Mazda. And, you know, Tesla has um, already started that a couple of years ago. More and more manufacturers are keeping up with this trend. And now it's really great to see that Mazda is also following that. Here, by the way, at the inside of the rear doors, again, we can see this felt material. Again, this one is from the 100% recycled plastic bottles. So really great ideas we see here. It looks like a living room atmosphere, yet they spend less resources also for designing everything. And it's also more allergy proof, by the way, in this case. So I think very fresh design ideas. And um, I think it's very good to see that another, you know, mass manufacturer is going in this more sustainable direction. And we also have some test samples here for you from the interior materials. So those PET bottles, for example, they're just you know, an example for that. Then you make this granulate from that and then you can use it again to create a fiber like this felt here again and make it automotive proof. And those are other fibers, recycled fibers that are being used also for the different interior materials. Pretty interesting. But even more interesting is the use of cork, which is you know, not only as a primary source, but here you know, from, the, from the trees, especially here grown in Portugal where we are today. And then you use the cork production here for the wine bottles and then the leftovers, you know, the leftovers here, you see the top part here, right there, they are again then crunched and can be made into this cork surface, which is also again automotive proof with, a, you know, some coating, but you really still feel it, very cool. And also about the leatherette use, again, uh, you know, the whole production process, they haven't used, you know, the special chemicals or something to make it really sustainable. And then we can see it here, this one is the other interior styling. So we've seen, the, you know, the, either this one or this one. So you see both here, actually. The right side was this modern confidence, the bright fabric. And on the left side, this industrial vintage. And you can feel it here again, this one. And especially also here, the industrial vintage is really very, very soft, and you see also you know, the fine surface. No one could actually you know, you know, see the difference what is actually the source material, so it's a very good step ahead. And now we will take a first exclusive test ride for you here. From the outside, this vehicle here is a Mazda CX-30. From the outside parts, from the inside parts, technology-wise, it is already a Mazda MX-30 car. Again, a prototype vehicle, but Mazda promises us that the riding feeling will already be pretty much similar as the final MX-30 model later. And Mazda calls this EV then eSkyActive. So, you know, the SkyActive X, for example, for their new technology with the self-igniting petrol engine. And this one, then, when they use the electric vehicles, they will call it eSkyActive. So, welcome to Thomas's prototype driving lounge today here with the Mazda MX-30 prototype and what did Mazda intend with the driving feeling of this car where they want to make it as much ICE so as much internal combustion engine alike as possible but of course at the same time with somewhat you know of the efforts of an electric vehicle also sound wise they want to make it silent yes but also to give you some acoustic feedback also on the interior that you know that you're accelerating. And they also worked, you know, a lot on braking and accelerator pedal and so on. And yeah, that's what they said. But the question is, how does it really feel? And we're going to examine this today here for you. Steel suspension, by the way. So there's one fixed suspension that will be available for this car. And we'll also head out to a very windy road, which we have driving We've been driving for a lot of different cars. We've been testing cars here in this surrounding here for, you know, a, lo a lot of years and also a lot of different cars. So I can very well also compare it to sports cars, to 
normal um, compact vehicles and so on. I've driven the Master 3, for example, on the very same roads we're going to take on. So this will be very, very interesting. So suspension-wise, when we're going over those humps here, of course, it's not a pleasant experience going over those humps, but in general, the suspension setup here, what I immediately feel is rather, let's say, a neutral setup. So it's not very stiff, but also not too soft. They try to find a good compromise between that. The steering, you know, and everything like the instruments, this will be changed as you've seen in the static presentation. So it's not the final interior, which what you know, what you see here on, on camera at the moment. And again, underneath the so technology, this one will be all the same. At the moment, we cannot adjust anything as for the recuperation modes. There's not a strong recuperation at the moment set in, so the car is rather using this, this rolling energy. In the final car, you'll be able to adjust the recuperation here with the shifting levers. So there will be some shifting levers right there, and then you can set three different modes of recuperation. Again, at the moment, it's rather rolling, so you know it doesn't feel much EV-like. When you have this one pedal feeling with the very hard recuperation, that's where it feels more electric vehicle-like. And the manufacturers have different philosophies. If they do it the one way or the other way, rather this rolling approach, with like rolling is more efficient actually when you roll. But as soon as you reduce the speed, the recuperation is better, of course but you can always induce it with the braking pedal. Then first the recuperation is done, and then when you need more braking power, then actually the real brakes set in. And the first thing I feel is it feels astonishingly normal. It doesn't feel that much EV-alike. But what is EV-alike is always the acceleration. And, um, you know, I can just show it to you when I'm here. At the moment, I'm here at 40 kilometers an hour. Let's just hammer it. And that's 90, so pretty quick. And also here I feel that they found a very, you know, sporty base uh, setup as for the center of gravity, shown it to you in the cutaway model. So that, you know, that's a really big advantage of the, all those EVs. The instant torque from the electric motor and also the low center of gravity because, you know, the whole weight of the battery is placed in the center of the vehicle, very low, and that brings the weight down. But again, the suspension is not set on a rough trim, and I really liked it because in everyday driving life, you don't need you know, a real rough sport suspension. And therefore the car is somewhat, you know, a little bit leaning into the corners, but that's also totally fine. Again, I don't need a rough sport setup. We have been criticizing that a little bit with the BMW i3, which is fun and sport to drive, but sometimes a little bit rough from suspension, and that's not the case here. Yeah, you've maybe been thinking it's a little bit i3 alike, yes, you know, with the suicide doors and so on and with the battery concept. Yeah. Some could say it's a BMW i3 of Master. <laughs> oh the Master engineer won't like that next to me, probably what I'm saying. I'm free to say whatever I, I want. So. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. So but um, indeed, you know, I found actually a little bit more comfortable than in the i3 as for suspension. And you've seen this instant torque is, of course, something that is always fun. And, you know, when you are in situations where you need to overtake someone, like now, you get, again, instant torque, good acceleration. And still, you know, it's pretty silent. That Now we're all, all the way at almost 100 kilometers or 60 miles now. And noise insulation wise it's also pretty cool, so we don't hear any massive wind noise. Um, so it's really silent both from the electric motor and from the wind noise and that's then something you can also enjoy on you know like a, on longer rides and so on here also now going uphill and I mean it's 140 horsepower so it's not an explosive acceleration like we know from very big EVs or like a, you know those, those Tesla performance models and so on because the battery size is not too huge and they also don't want to exaggerate the house horsepower output, keeping the price uh, also in check, the price performance ratio. But I, I think it's it's totally fine, you know, you're not lacking any power. And if you think about, um, you know, the naturally aspirated master engines, which have a very nice and smooth linear power output, but sometimes when you go uphill here, and I experience the same with the Master 3, for example, when you have the smaller, you know, 
naturally aspirated petrol engine. Then sometimes when you're going up, you say, like, ah, okay, it feels nice, but it could have a little bit more power. But you do have that here with the electric motor. So when you're here uphill, you just have that power. Again, it's not a sports car-like acceleration, but it's no, just, just feels right. And again, you may be picking up that sound. So there's like this subtle spaceship-like sound, which is again, you know, not annoying, but you somehow feel that something is happening, something is moving. We made recently a special there with, you know, the, the BMW sounds that Hans Zimmer is doing for them. So check out uh, that episode if you're more interested in how electric sounds are being introduced now to the car market. And steering feeling wise, again, a very natural steering feeling. That's also what Master has been doing quite well. So it's not too stiff, it's not too light. You see here how I transport the commands to the road. And also when I'm going in some slalom here now, it gives me a good feeling of the car, you know? So I feel actually quite connected to the whole vehicle. And I have to say, it's probably the electric vehicle that feels least like an electric vehicle I've driven so far. So, and well, if that's a good or bad thing, that's probably up to you. Um, I think an EV can feel like an EV, yeah, that's no problem. Of course, it will be different when you have the highest e recuperation mode. But then again, I think it does not matter that much if it feels like an EV or not. What matters most is how the overall natural driving feeling is. And that's something actually what they achieved quite well. So um, you indeed feel quite connected to the car and everything you, you don't have to think about. You don't have to think, oh, could there be something different from the steering? Could the throttle input be different? Could this be different? You just think of, yeah, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, period, you know? And that's, again, also what they, uh, you know, what they have been testing this car for, um, especially in the European um, Research and Development Center. And quite impressed by the result, actually. So, uh, it feels quite agile. And again, this, you know, this, this natural driving feeling, this is, I think, something which is the, you know, the thing we can take most from this prototype ride. And one more thing to mention, we talked about that with the, for example, Master 6, uh, Master 3 as well, the so-called G-vectoring control. So to reduce the G-forces, what is Master doing? Here when entering a corner, they taking away some of the torque to give some more weight to the front wheels to be able to steer a little bit more precise. When we're exiting a corner, then there's a little bit more torque to give you know, some more weight to the rear of the car to give a more stable, you know, um, you know, accelerating out of the corner. And the same thing they are actually doing here for the electric vehicle, just that it works even better than when you're exiting out of the corners. It's nothing that you would feel immediately as a driver especially but it's something that you you know feel on a subtle base as a co-driver because the g-forces on the human body are being reduced and this will for example have then a long-term rather relaxing effect on the body for example here by the way now again as this car is not set on the recuperating mode we are rolling predominantly and so again this makes this less ev feeling a little bit stronger but again if you want a stronger EV feeling then you will be able also to drive with the recuperation modes but at the end of the day if you rather use the brake pedal and start the recuperation with that or if you use then the recuperation modes it's also a little bit personal preference um, if you prefer that or not or if you you know rolling ground down a mountain hill pass or something then it's probably easier to set the recuperation uh, to, to a very high level but again, you'll be able to, to adjust that yourself. Again, really fun ride and, you know, agile fun with this car. And I can just say, is it even more fun than driving with the internal combustion engine cars? Yes, definitely, from the driver experience. And that's not only counting for the MX-30, but, you know, for the whole range. Just from a driver experience, whoever has driven an electric vehicle for the very first time, usually confirms that they are really like a lot of fun to drive. For me, it's all about the charging infrastructure. Do you have problems with it? Then you maybe have to wait. 
if you're charging infrastructure is all fine, you got it at home or at work, then you're actually good to go. And especially for a car that has, you know, like a smaller battery size, the home charging infrastructure will be even more important, of course. So, what do you say here to our driving impressions for today? Please leave us also some feedback here for our driving moderation. And of course, at a later stage, we will then test the very fine production model here of the MX-30. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Mazda MX-30. Well, first of all, as for the name, yeah, some fans might be irritated because of the MX name. You know, we had uh, approximately the same here with the Ford Mustang Mach-E recently. You can argue about it. I mean, it's still, the name is okay because you have some letters and some numbers as they also use with other cars. You can surely argue if MX is the right one, but they want to stress this sporty heritage. Then, in general about the exterior design. I mean, it looks quite likable. It looks crossover SUV-ish, but then again, a little bit more agile, especially in the rear part. And I think overall, it will gather a lot of fans with that. Interior styling-wise, with a great living room atmosphere, looks really cool, clean and collected. The use of more sustainable materials and mainly animal-free materials is, of course, probably the best thing about this car. Finally, another manufacturer is thinking about a whole cycle of sustainability and making it better for the environment. And I think that's exactly the right approach. And you can you know, just recommend that also to other manufacturers to you know, be serious about sustainability, not only talk about it and use it as you know, marketing slogans, but really do something like this, which we can see here. And that's also the way sustainability works, if it's good or even better and sustainable at the very same time. Also interesting, for example, with the cork materials and especially because they're referring to their heritage. Of course, some other elements we already know from the all-new Mazda models. They are you know, resembling the ones uh, we have seen, Mazda 3, Mazda CX-30 and so on. But that's also, you know, that customers actually get along with that maybe a little bit easier and why not using those very same stuff we've seen there because it already has been proven. About the suicide doors, you can argue about that if that's you know a clever choice. Of course, there is again this heritage referral. Yes, normal door would have, would have been more practical. I think everyone agrees to that. It was the same with the BMW i3. For show purposes, this is somehow cooler, but for everyday driving life, the normal solution would have been definitely easier. Still, the dimensions of the cars are actually quite practical, you know, it's not too big, not too small, you still have enough interior room left, but you can still use it in the city very well. About right sizing of the battery, yes, it's true that you actually save especially CO2 output and also raw materials in the production process when you don't make the battery that big. Then again, you know, the low range could be a factor where someone says, maybe I go for a different vehicle. So not, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I favor this, you know, environmental aspect about the smaller battery. Yes, if you use this one for city drive only, this won't be a problem at all. Just recharge it overnight in your, you know, household plug or something. This will be all fine. But the use is definitely limited if you think a little bit more motorway and a little bit more longer drives. So you have to think about that if that's then the, you know, the right car for you or if you go for something with a bigger battery. And driving wise, for this conclusion, we go outside again. And to our separate conclusion from our driving part, it was a very interesting experience. First of all, it feels very compact to drive, very fun to drive. It's not too stiff and sporty. Yet again, it's a little bit more fun than driving with the combustion engine cars. Also, if you compare it to the Mazda 3 or Mazda CX-30, it has just a little bit more power, especially than the naturally aspirated engines. So that was a very cool experience. But it does not feel that much electric vehicle alike. So from the EVs I've been driving, especially if you don't set any strong recuperation, it feels least EV-like and you can favor that or you can say, yeah, you know, I want a strong EV feeling. But then again, if you set later on like the recuperation mode a little bit stronger, then it will feel more electric vehicle-like. But overall, the coolest thing about this car, I think, is that they achieved a very natural driving feeling. So you feel, you know, you know pretty much in unity, as I say in the marketing slogan, but in this, this case, it's uh, correct that, you know, like driver, car and road is pretty much connected. And that's indeed what they also achieved here, especially with the lower center of gravity and more power you get here from this electric vehicle. So very promising first ride. And I hope to be able to continue for that with the series production model. We'll soon show that to you as soon as it's available. 
Thanks so much for tuning in today and leave us your feedback. See ya.